737 South Main Street in the heart of Heber City. Hi, this is Nicole with Mountain Refined Furnishings and Flooring. And if you didn't know, we've recently partnered with Mattress Warehouse of Utah to bring you the largest selection of mattresses around. The team at Mountain Refined prides themselves on making your home a place where you love to be. We offer a large selection of furnishings, flooring, window treatments, gifts, decor, and so much more. If you haven't been by lately, stop and check it out. You'll be pleasantly surprised. We're located at 480 North Main Street. Napa Know How. Your local Napa Auto Parts, Wasatch Auto Parts at 105 North Main Street in Heber City stocks auto parts, tools and equipment, and many other items for heavy-duty trucks, marine, and farming equipment. Stop in today at Wasatch Auto Parts, 105 North Main Street in Heber City, a proud sponsor of Wasatch Was Sports. Hi, this is Kendall Crittenden, Wasatch County Council member and a member of the Caring Community Coalition. Did you know that kids are at a greater risk of experimenting with alcohol and drugs between the hours of 3 and 6 p.m.? Many parents are still at work. Listening to the Dairy Key Free Game Show once again since 1946 has been serving the Heber Valley where quality food and family can come together. We're getting ready for the national anthem here at Spanish Fork High School. Wasatch High School baseball looking for their first region win against the Spanish Fork Dons. We'll have Al the start of the action after the break. Attention painters and homeowners, premium Killymore paint is now available at your neighborhood Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. That's right, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the official authorized Killymore paint outlet. You can now get premium Killymore paint at your Heber Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. You'll love their high quality, long lasting finishes for any home paint project. So if you're painting a single room, refreshing your front door, or doing a full repaint of your home, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the place to go for fine Killymore paints. Stop by today. Well, folks, spring is here. Have no country gardens and nurseries here. More everyday garden supplies, decor, and more. From our personal gardener, where we offer a large variety of soil, mulches, and decorative rock. Come see what we have in store. Country Gardens and Nursery, 1401 South, US 189. We'll see you soon and hope to put you in bloom. I'm Walker Kessler, and I play basketball for a living. So I know how important it is to have the support of a team you can trust. That's why I love UCCU. UCCU is more than a credit union. They're a true financial partner. A local team of experts your entire family can trust at every step of your financial journey. Just visit UCCU.com and elevate your banking experience. Tires in Heber is your one-stop shop for tires and service. What was once Point S is now Big O Tires. Same service, but different name. We're locally owned and operated and want to help you get your vehicle ready to road trip this summer. Stop in for all your new brand tires, oil changes, alignments, brakes, batteries, shocks, struts, and a whole lot more. Plus, Big O Tires offers financing options to fit any budget or any situation. Visit us today. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Hey there, Heber City. Are you tired of dings, dents, and scrapes ruining the beauty of your beloved vehicle? Look no further than Robards Collision, the ultimate destination for all your auto body needs. At Robards Collision, they've been offering top-notch collision repairs and outstanding customer service. Their team of experts and missions is passionate about bringing your car back to its original glory, no matter the size of damage. Their state-of-the-art facility is equipped with cutting-edge technology, ensuring precise and accurate repairs. They handle it all with precision and care. Chad here from Mount Rush Trainers. Celebrating 20 years in business, we know you value strength and reliability. Whether it's for work or play, our dumping equipment trailers are built to last. Enclosed cargo trailers for business and fun, or open utility trailers for everything in between. With expert sales,
most parts of service we want you covered. Mountain West Trailers is always one of the high priorities. Visit us at mountainwesttrailer.com or stop by at 1470 South Highway 40 here in Hebron. An opening pitch brought to you by Heber Appliance. When you're down to your final out and your fridge goes out, turn your drop ball into a touch them all at Heber Appliance. Increase your at-home satisfaction with Heber Appliance furniture and mattress. Ty, take us through the batting order for Wasatch. Ty leading off for Wasatch will be senior playing shortstop Carter Bucod, hitting 308 on the season. In the two hole, I talked about how good he was last week in the box tether. He is Blake Sweat and he raised his batting average significantly, now hitting 341 on on the year. He'll be hitting in the two hole for Wasatch. Riker Evans will be hitting third for Wasatch, also hitting 308 on the season. Tyler on base percentage near 500 though for Riker Evans on the year. He's been fantastic. In the fourth spot will be sophomore Crew Baxter playing left field. He's hitting 280 on the season. And then in the fifth spot will be team leader in batting average Grant Mahoney at 370. Hitting six will be freshman Braxton Fowler. Tyler, limited opportunities for Braxton this season. Hitting 133 in 15 plate appearances. Hitting 7th will be Jacob Bradshaw hitting 250 in only 7 plate appearances on the year. He's playing right field today. Bridger Shaw has moved over to left field, Tyler. He's hitting 196 on the season. He'll be hitting in the 8 hole. And then Garrett Christensen who had a really nice week behind the plate for Wasatch last week will be rounding out the 9 spot hitting 200 on the year. Ryan Lampson on the mound for the Dons. As you mentioned, Ty, 16 innings pitched on the year, 2.52 ERA, 9 walks, 16 Ks for the senior. He'll miss low and away for ball one. Second pitch out of the windup. Will miss low as well. Too low to count. Batting order brought to you by Bank of Utah, who has accounts for everyone, personal and business, checking and savings accounts to mortgage and consumer loans. Visit our friendly Hebrew branch at 620 West 100 South, and together we'll build relationships that last. Bank of Utah is an equal housing lender. Third pitch is in there for a strike. Moves count to 2-1 to the senior card of Bucod with junior Blake Sweat on deck. Beautiful day down here at Spanish Fork High School. That one's going to miss low as well. Lamson missing low at the bottom of the zone. Ty former pitching coach. Do you like seeing your guy miss low or high early on in the ballgame? Well, you'd like to see low, Tyler, is where you want to see him missing. You'd like to not see him miss at all coming out of the ballgame, Tyler, but low is preferable. Although I will say that one's going to be swung on. It's going to actually go off of Lampson, and it's going to ricochet to the second baseman. Tough break there for Carter Bucod. Good barrel, but gets a bad hop and goes to the second baseman for the first out. Yeah, that was a tough break, Tyler. Carter pretty much on the nose with that ball. Just hit into the long grass, playing on a, a real grass field. And Spanish likes to grow their grass a little longer, Tyler. So balls that hit in the infield will slow down compared to what they would be like maybe in the uh, infield for Wasatch, Ty. But just ricocheted over to the second baseman, and Carter gets out on that one. I was going to say, though, with Lamson here, Tyler, a little bit of a unique release with him. He's a little bit higher in his release point. And so you have a fastball that's kind of diving down at the hitters a little bit more. Can make it a little harder to hit, Tyler. Can lead to a few more ground balls as well in the ball game. Let's see if Lamson is a double play type pitcher. This pitch is going to be in there for the strike. It's going to be fouled off of the first base coach, Coach Stocking. Between pitches, Coach Thorpe, new head coach at Spanish Fork High School, took a trip to the mound just to make sure his pitcher was okay after taking one off the leg. 0-1 the count here to Sweat. Curve ball in there for a strike. Moves count to 0-2. First look at the off-speed pitch. Lands it for a strike. 0-2 the count. Spanish wearing all white uniforms. The old-style sleeveless uniform. And Wasatch wearing their gray pins. That one's in there at the belt for strike three. Two outs here in the top of the first. Well, as I pointed out, Tyler, he's, he's pretty effective around the zone. Only nine walks on the season. And over 90 batters faced here, Tyler. And so Wasatch can't get down in the count. He's going to be very effective there, Tyler, with that off-speed pitch, as you saw against Blake. So you need to go off for that first good available fastball. That one's in there for strike one here to Riker Evans. You mentioned the tie 316 on the year, a non-base percentage close to 500. Four extra base hits and eight RBIs, second on the team in the RBI category. The 0-1. Goes back to that off speed. Ray Evans will swing over the top. 0-2 to count. Yeah, see, that's where you don't want to be, Tyler. It's a really good curveball. We've only seen it a couple times, but so far, really sharp. And if you take the first fastball and let him go that curveball. 
Baxter on deck for Wasatch. State tournament in 2004 was actually played at Spanish Fork High School. Utah Valley University was putting in their new stadium, and so the state baseball tournament was switched over here to Spanish Fork High School. Kind of some better memories about that long grass you were mentioning, Ty. <laughs> Wasatch was used to playing on very thin grass, had a lot of speed, and a couple of base hits were taken away due to the long grass, a couple of extra base hits, and Wasatch ended up falling in a 2-1 ball game to Cedar City. Cedar City ended up taking second that year to Bear River High School. 2-2 to the count as that one misses outside after a foul ball, so 2-2 to the count with two outs. I think, didn't they have an old metal fence at so. that time too, Tyler? Just one of those old-fashioned tin fences around Spanish Fork. Misses high with that off-speed pitch. So that'll throw the count at 3-2. Pretty big field compared to the other fields in our region, Tyler. 404 to center field, 345 to the corners. Goes with the high fastball. Would have been ball four. Evans goes after. A little check swing that will go foul. And we'll reset at 3 2. A couple of big news in the sports world we could talk about during the ball game today. The Phoenix Coyotes are no more as they fit wrapped up their regular season with the fans chanting Salt Lake Sucks last night. Not sure if you saw that tie, but we had a little Salt Lake Sucks. But the Coyotes will be relocating to Salt Lake City next year, so first time ever an NHL franchise in Utah. Off-speed pitch is going to be going the other way. This one has a chance of getting down fair. It's fair. Riker Evans with the two-out, two-strike hit and keeps the inning alive with this two-out single. Really good at bat there from Riker, Tyler, but what's new? I feel like we say that every time he steps into the box, but fouls off a, a close pitch there on a full count. Tyler works back after getting down 0-2, makes a full, fouls off a pitch this close, and then a good pitch there on the second full count pitch, and he just serves it out to right field with a single to keep this inning going. He's going to bring up Crew Baxter, 280 on the year. Lamson will be working out of the stretch for the first time. And this is going to be a swing on first pitch. It's going to be a single down on the first base side. Evans is going to go from first to third. A little back pick throw here will get to the catcher. And Wasatch with two outs has back-to-back -back singles and runners on the corners. That's one of those long grass singles, Tyler. If you're playing on a turf field, that one may have a chance to get by the right fielder. But just such long grass going through, as soon as that hit the outfield, it comes about to a screeching halt. Made it easy for the right fielder to circle around and keep that to a single. Otherwise, you may be having Evans finding a chance to get around the bases and scoring on that hit down the line. First and third, two outs for Grant Mahoney. Leads the team with 11 RBIs, DHing today. First pitch of the bat's going to be that off-speed pitch. Mahoney looking for a fastball, swings over the top for strike one. That's a good approach from Grant. Tyler, he's got a runner in scoring position. You're, you're Two outs, you're looking for that first pitch fastball, which he's gone too often. But a good pitch there from Spanish Fork to keep Grant off balance. The 0-1, this one's going to be rolled down the left field line into our blind spot, and that one will be fair. One run will come in. Baxter's going to try to go from first to third, and he'll do it. Three singles in a row with two outs, and Wasatch takes the 1-0 lead here in the top of the first. That's a really good job here for Wasatch, Tyler, to continue to battle with two outs here. They don't give up. Also like Crew being aggressive there. Tyler going first to third on that hit. Not making it easy on Spanish Fork. Keep the pressure on the catcher. This is a huge backstop. So anything passed should lead to a run. It's a big step, a big uh, long kick here from Lamson working out of the stretch. That one's in there at the belt for strike one. Runners on the corners, two away. Wasatch had three singles, has had three singles with two outs. in order to take the 1-0 lead here in the top of the first. Braxton gets the sign here from Coach Jacobson. Runners are both first baseman and third baseman playing even with the bag. The 0-1 swung on a little bit up in the zone. It's going to be elevated to the first baseman. First baseman coming in on it and will make the grab, and that'll do it. But Wasatch scores one run on three hits, no errors. Two are left on base, 1-0 as we move into the bottom of the first. Unlock your potential at Bonnie Joseph Academy here in Heber. Explore the art of barbering, basic aesthetic, cosmetology, master aesthetic, and nail technician programs. Visit bonniejosephacademy.edu to enroll today. Financial aid is available for qualifying students, and we offer flexible distant education options. Transform your passion into a rewarding career with Bonnie Joseph Academy, where beauty meets expertise. 
Hi, this is Nicole with Mountain Refined Furnishings and Flooring. And if you didn't know, we've recently partnered with Mattress Warehouse of Utah to bring you the largest selection of mattresses around. The team at Mountain Refined prides themselves on making your home a place where you love to be. We offer a large selection of furnishings, flooring, window treatments, gifts, decor, and so much more. If you haven't been by lately, stop and check it out. You'll be pleasantly surprised. We're located at 480 North Main Street. Grant Mahoney with our Bank of Utah RBI single to get Wasatch up 1-0 after the top of the first inning. Now moving into the bottom of the first, brought to you by Good Spa Day, your favorite hometown place to relax and unwind, offering massage, skin care, nail care, and unique relaxing spa packages. Pick a Good Spa Day to be your spa. Wasatch leading with Spanish Fork 1-0 as we head to the bottom of the first. As we go around the diamond, Blake Sweat will be on the mound for Wasatch, pitching to catcher Garrett Christensen. Riker Evans playing first base. Braxton Fowler playing second. Shortstop will be the senior Carter Bucod. Junior Bridger Shaw at third base. Your outfield today, Crew Baxter in left. Zach Burdett will be patrolling center field. And then in right field today is another senior in Jacob Bradshaw. Leading it off for the Spanish Fork Dons will be Warren, Dart, and Nilsson. Warren, the leadoff hitter, 435 with six RBIs. And it's a pretty potent top half of the Spanish Ford lineup, Tyler. Speed and power. It's going to be an interesting dynamic here with power going against power. Blake Sweat, a power arm. High 80s. It's going to be going against some good bat speed. It's going to be first pitch is going to be swung on to shallow right field. Evans going back. Bradshaw coming up, making the grab, calling off ball at the last moment. One pitch, one away. Oh, this would be great if Blake can get out to a good, efficient first inning, Tyler. That's kind of been one of the kryptonite pieces to his game is the first innings have just gotten long, and it's kind of made him press over the course of games. By the time he gets to the third, fourth, fifth inning, he's usually a little worn down. One pitch, one out. Oh, just what the doctor ordered. So you can get through this lineup quickly here in the first. He's going to come up with a four-year starter, starting as shortstop. Started as a freshman for the Dons. 364, seven RBIs, and five extra base hits. Doing a little bit of research. Looks like he's going to Utah Tech University. That's yeah, just kind of scouting it out a little bit. He decommitted from Arizona State in September when all that chaos of Pac-12 falling apart and Arizona State moving over into the Big 12. And through all that, you had a lot of players that ended up decommitting, Dart being one of them. And now he's going to stay a little closer to home, Tyler. One, two, three. It's just a little too hot. St. George, a little less hot. You heard down there. He heard the Coyotes were moving to Salt Lake and decided <laughs> that that was going to do it. One, two, the count. Strike one on the first pitch ball. Now a foul ball. Moves count one, two. The wind up. The pitch goes to the off speed and freezes them for strike three. The worst was the first Wasatch physical therapy strikeout of the ball game. Ty, that shows you just how good Blake Sweat's stuff is because Will Dart has seen everything. This kid for four years has been traveling all around the country. He's uh, he's not going to be shy about seeing 92 to 95 and good breaking pitches. He's seen it. And so for him to freeze on that one from Blake is really an indicator of how sharp that pitch was. Two-way. Two batters, two away. He's going to bring up the number three hitter, Nelson, the catcher. 288 on the year, seven RBI, or excuse me, 22 RBIs, eight extra base hits, including two home runs. Check swing strike one to start off the about. So right back into the windup, delivers the 0-1, goes back to that off speed, misses just outside for ball one. 1-1 one, one to count. That one misses low, goes back to the fastball, misses low for ball two. One, two, now the count. On deck is number 22, the second baseman, Scott. The two, one, goes back to the fastball, gets the outside corner for strike two. Two, two, the count with two away. Ty, I think I'd probably go right back to that if I'm Blake. Two, two, we're humming. Don't try to give Spanish Fork any extra juice by perhaps getting this to a full count. Go right back to that fastball and challenge. Goes back to the curveball, gets him to swing out in the dirt. Christensen smothers it, throws it down to first base. Can't throw it down to first base. It goes into right field. Throw it into second base for Nilsson is not in time. And Nilsson will be into second base on the air, throwing it down to first base.
Well, Ty, that's kind of been the formula, hasn't it? Blake now has three outs thrown in this inning, but we're still going as an air will extend it. Really not a good swing, Tyler. That pitch was never close to the zone, and so fortunate strikeout on that, but he had the three here for Spanish guessing, Ty, and Wasatch just needs to execute. It's, uh, frankly, a tough ball to block because it was so far out in front of the plate on the breaking pitch. It was a great block, but just not a good throw down to first base from Garrett. Fastball misses out of the zone as they Blake having to work out of the stretch for the first time today with a runner on second base and a duck on the pond. Hitter once again is Scott, the second baseman. 353 batting average, six RBIs, and five extra base hits, including one home run. Goes back to the fastball. Outside, ball two. Good lead here from the speed up runner for Nelson, the catcher. Couple of looks, now swings at this one. It's a 2-1. This one looks like it's gonna get out of play. It's in behind the dugout from where we're sitting and it will get out of play for strike one. 2-1 the count. Blake really has the timing off of these Spanish fork hitters so far in this first inning. First batter flew out softly to right field. Second batter, he's rung up, looking for a pitch that he did not get. Third batter also striking out, just guessing on a pitch. That one, again, not good contact here, even though it was a 2-0 count. 2-1, goes high and inside, four ball three, 3-1, three, now the count. On deck is number 18, the third baseman, a 4.48 batting average on the year. The 3-1 misses as well. First walk of the game here for Blake Sweat, and just like Wasatch with two outs, was able to produce a run. Spanish Fork now has two guys on base with two outs. With Anderson, a 4.48 batting average, six RBIs and three doubles on the year. Got to tell you right, it is just like that first inning for Wasatch, and the fact you get the first two really quickly, and then all of a sudden you're in a little bit of a jam. But one of these things is not like the other. Wasatch earned it with three hits. Spanish has two base runners by way of air and walk. Goes back to the off speed, but that one misses high for ball one. Ty, I'd love to see that one be called a strike, but that's probably the right call. That ball where it's breaking is coming across a little high. Finished looking really nice in the glove of Christensen, but probably a little high. Goes back to the pass ball. It's going to be elevated to left field. Crew Baxter coming over and makes the play. And Wasatch able to get out of the inning. No runs on no hits, one air. Two are left on base. And Wasatch has the lead going into the top of the second. Are you ready for lunch? With a Dairy King, home of the train, is serving the best foods with friends and family in the Valley and have been the winner of Best of State for 19 years. They've recently been named the official Best of Utah for their milkshakes. You've got to try their delicious train burger with an Oreo shake. They also have those yummy salads that just hit the spot. Or you can try a turkey breast sandwich that tickles the taste buds. They've proudly been serving the Heber Valley for 75 years. That's the Dairy King, home of the train, serving deliciousness daily. Stop in today. <laughs> Attention all sidelines. Economists and investors have said recently, if you are saving money and waiting to buy, I'd reconsider even at current interest rates. Reports have shown that the masses move or not move based on the behavior of interest rates. This is sidelining in our current environment. With most people using this information as their playbook, it leaves everyone doing the same thing at the same time, resulting in a basic but serious future crisis of supply and demand. So, come see me, Guild Mortgage, and let's put you in the game. Thompson, MLS 257849. Good mortgage company is an equal housing lender. MLS 3274. All loans are subject to underwriter approval. Terms and conditions may apply. Subject to change without notice. And now, back to the action. Wasatch High School Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Top of the second brought to you by Wasatch Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine, your rehabilitation specialist dedicated to your total recovery from all injuries. Let Dan Ivey and his team get you back to 100%. Wasatch leads 1-0 on our Heber Appliance scoreboard after the two-out RBI single from Grant Mahoney. Now 12 RBIs on the year for Grant. Leading it off here in the top of the second will be Jacob Bradshaw, Bridger Shaw, and Garrett Christensen. Ty, this is a pretty good lineup the way Coach Jacobson's built this because those three you just listed, Bradshaw, great leadoff type hitter for this spot, Tyler, as you go seven, eight, nine. You're going to get speed with Bradshaw if he can get on base. Shaw can do a little bit of everything, Tyler. You can hit for power. He can lay down a bunt. You can hit and run with him. 
and Garrett can clean them all up with extra base hits. Nine hitter with a lot of power. Foul ball here from Jacob Bradshaw for strike one. Soccer team is also down here at Spanish Fork today. 9-0 and on the year after defeating Tempu 2-0 on Tuesday. Another pitch is fouled off straight back again. So an 0-2 count here to Bradshaw. Number two in the RPI rankings are the Wasps trying to defend that state title from last year. And I'd say that's off to a pretty good start, Ty, when you're 9-0 and to start off the year. Goes to the off speed in the dirt for ball one. Yeah, Ty, it's hard to defend a title because you're the marked team. People know coming in that they've got to give you their best shot, and Wasatch is defending the title well. 1-2 the count here to Bradshaw on the left-hand side of the box. The pitch, that one misses high and outside. 2-2 two -two now the count. I do have a minor complaint, Tyler, about the Wasatch soccer team. Was it Tuesday, Tuesday. they were playing in pink uniforms? It's I pink. don't remember seeing pink on Wasatch's school colors, and so I'm confused as to these alternate uniforms that we've seen with soccer and <laughs> saw drill team in red earlier this year. I just don't don't see the black and gold as often as I'd like to see it. There, there's a lot of discussion on the new school and the colors, but it doesn't really matter if your school's going to wear pink <laughs> on the soccer field. Full count here to Bradshaw. Swing and a miss on a pitch at the belt. Four strike three. Good at bad there from Bradshaw, but ends in the second strikeout of the game for Lampson. Tight is a quality of bat from Jacob. Even though he went down swinging six pitches, Got Lampson up to 27 pitches already in this one, Tyler. Only one out into the second inning. Jacob just looked like he was looking for a different pitch, Ty. He guessed on that one and was way behind. It's going to bring up Bridger Shaw. 196 batting average on the air. He's going to swing at the first one. It's going to be a lazy ground ball to the first baseman. He'll field it cleanly. Step on the bag. Two away. It'll bring up Garrett Christensen. Also hitting below 200, but has a double on the year. Back into the lineup after being out of the lineup last week. He'll step up with two outs, nobody on base. That's where what Wasatch likes after the first inning. They're able to string together three singles to get that one run on the board. First pitch here of the at bat. That one's low for ball one. 1-0 oh, one -oh the count. Garrett, a really big, strong player, Tyler, for Wasatch. Played D-line for the last three years. Wrestler, wrestler at the 215 weight class. That one misses up, ball two. And I feel like he's at his best here on the baseball diamond when he's just cutting that swing loose, Tyler. Not guessing when he commits, just let that bat head get out there and eat, and he's going to be able to be more successful. The 2-0, misses outside for ball three, 3-0 three -oh the count. Top of the order on deck is Carter Bucod, grounded out up the middle on a nice barrel in his first at bat. 3-0 the count here to the catcher. That one does get in there for a strike. 4 3 1. Back into the windup is Lampson. Delivers the 3 1. Pitch a little up in the zone, but it's fouled straight back. 4 strike 2. Full count, 3 2. But that's one of those aggressive swings I'm talking about, Tyler. I, I love that approach from Garrett. It's 3 1. He's looking fastball. 9 hitter. You don't want to walk your 9 hitter. And he's sitting dead red fastball. And. Let it loose. 3-2, swung on. This one's going to be elevated in foul territory to the first base side. First baseman's going to go over and make the grab, and Wasatch will go out in order. 1-2-3, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. 1-0 going into the bottom of the second. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Our locally owned Ace stores are committed to helping our neighbors and our communities. And because we're in the neighborhood, we can deliver almost anything you need. So shop in store or online for whatever your home or yard needs. Choose from top brands like Milwaukee, Steel, Traeger, and Benjamin Moore. Then pick up in store, curbside, or we'll deliver your order right to your home. Around the block, what you need in stock with people who know how to help. See acehardware.com for details. Pigo Tires in Heber is your one-stop shop for tires and service. What was once Point S is now Big O Tires. Same service, but different name. We're locally owned and operated and want to help you get your vehicle ready to road trip this summer. Stop in for all your name brand tires, oil changes, alignments, brakes, batteries, shocks, struts, and a whole lot more. Plus, Big O Tires offers financing options to fit any budget or any situation. Visit us today. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Napa Know How. 
your local Napa Auto Parts, Wasatch Auto Parts at 105 North Main Street in Heber City. Stocks auto parts, tools and equipment, and many other items for heavy-duty trucks, marine, and farming equipment. Stop in today at Wasatch Auto Parts, 105 North Main Street in Heber City, a proud sponsor of Wasatch Was Sports. Hi, this is Kendall Crittenden, Wasatch County Council member and a member of the Caring Community Coalition. Did you know that kids are at a greater risk of experimenting with alcohol and drugs between the hours of 3 and 6 p.m.? Many parents are still at work this time of day. Check in with your kids. Find out where your kids will be, who they'll be with, and what they will be doing. Brought to you by Wasatch Behavioral Health and the Caring Community Coalition. And now, back to the action. Wasatch High School Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Bottom of the second brought to you by Gravity Coalition, offering the best in bikes, skis, snowboards, skateboards, and more in the Heber Valley. Personalized service, sales, and repair for the gear you love. Gravity Coalition in Midway, Utah, or gravitycoalition.com. This is a cool shop. The pitcher, Lamson, followed by the DH, Nelson, and the first baseman, Shipman, up for the Dons. Swing and a foul ball on first pitch, and now another swing and a foul ball on the second pitch, and Blake's up 0-2. Yeah, Lampson aggressive, getting after it. Tyler, not one of the higher batting averages for Spanish Fork, 235 on the year, but he has been a staple in most of their lineups, 60 plate appearances. Misses inside for ball one, so one, two, the count on the fastball. Went fastball, curveball, fastball in this at bat. Lampson back into the box, the one, two, and that one's going to get him off the shoulder. Hit by pitch, puts the leadoff guy on. Probably going to get yourself a courtesy runner here too, Tyler. Pitcher for Spanish Fork, and they will. It's going to be number 14 as I take a look at the lineup here. That'll be Jesse Harrison that will be running for Spanish Fork. So now the D.H. Nelson comes up to the plate, a 256 batting average with a couple of RBIs and a couple of doubles on the year. Don't know Coach Thorpe. Ty see what type of uh, offense he wants to run here with the guy on first, nobody out. Blake working out of the stretch. Goes with the slide step delivery. Misses high for ball one. Forgot his wristband, Tyler. Had to take a break to get the offense on his, on his wrist. Coach Morgan starting uh, walkthroughs for spring football yesterday. Saw the football team out on the football field. Couple of looks here from Sweat. Delivers. Swing and a miss from Nelson. 1-1. One, one, now the count. Big swing there. From the designated hitter. DHing for the left fielder Peterson today. The 1-1 one, one count with nobody out. Pickoff move. Back in time. And we'll reset still with the count 1-1. One, one. Ty, you're giving ringside seats next year to the Coyotes or courtside seats to the Jazz on the same night. Which ones are you taking? I think I'm going to take the Coyotes, Ty. I, hockey, from what I'm told, is the be best atmosphere in professional sports to be in. Just the atmosphere itself is electric. I'm excited for them to get here, Tyler, but will they be the Coyotes by the yeah, time they make true. it here? One, the two, Utah Yodelies? One, two, the count. As a foul ball here from Nielsen. Nielsen only has two extra base hits on the season, Tyler. Taking a look at the Wasatch outfield, they're in playing him shallow. And it won't matter because he's going to take the long walk back to the dugout after that pitch. Pitch just above the belt. Called for strike three. Second strikeout, third strikeout of the game here for Blake Sweat. And Wasatch has one away, and that'll bring up the first baseman, Shipman. 312, two RBIs, and two extra base hits on the year as well. Yeah, Ty, so a little more dangerous than you might expect in the bottom part of the lineup. He's got some speed. A couple extra base hits, triples on the board this year for Spanish Fork. Swings of the first pitch behind the fastball for strike one. Do you think the end bringing multiple professional franchises helps? 
like if you have an NHL team, an NBA team, is that more enticing now to free agents that says, hey, Utah's a little bit more on the map. We're going to go to Utah we with an we NHL can't team. Hurt, can it? I don't think so. Does it help the fan? No, because those are expensive tickets, Tyler, sure. to get to those games sure. anymore. It's kind of outrageous how much those prices are. No balls, one strike. Pickoff move, not in time. What is the most expensive ticket? The NFL has to be the most expensive, right? It's over $200 per yeah, ticket I for the bad ones. Yeah, I think so. Basketball, as much as it is, it's still nowhere close to that. I think I you're think 30 to $40 per ticket for the nosebleeds. I think if you take out. This one's going to be swung on, elevated to center field. Zag Burdett goes to his right, settles underneath it, makes the grab. Two away here in the bottom of the second. I think if you take out your big markets, your... Boston, New York, L.A., I still think you can get a reasonable baseball ticket, right, when you go to a game, say, in Denver to Colorado or down at the Diamondbacks. I think you can still get a reasonable baseball ticket. Yeah, they make their money through volume, right, right. with baseball. With 81 games over the course of the year, you can lower the ticket price a little bit and still make quite a bit of money. It's going to bring up the number nine hitter, Duvall, the right fielder, 222, four RBIs and one triple. On the air, playing right field today. Goes with the off-speed to the number nine hitter, and that one's in there for a strike one. Top of the order on deck is Warren. So two outs, runner on first. A little bit bigger lead here from Harrison. Slide step delivery is a fastball that's fouled off behind us for strike two. Really good job from Blake here, Tyler. You've got the nine hitter up, as you pointed out. He's not messing around with the power at the top of the lineup waiting on deck here, going right after him, 0-2. Now he's just got to go finish it. Don't be too fine. Don't come too far inside, Tyler, and risk another hit by pitch. 0-2 does go inside, a little bit low for ball one. 1-2 one, the count now to the ball. I, I like that he goes to that fastball there, though, Tyler. That's a good put-out pitch for Blake. It's a plus fastball. It's hard for hitters to catch up to, especially when they're down 0-2, looking for a breaking pitch. The 1-2. Tried to go upstairs, too far upstairs for ball two. Ties up the count at 2-2 two, two, with two away. Blake comes set, 2-2. Two, two. Bradshaw comes in a little bit. Long pause, delivers with the fastball inside once again for ball three. Fills up the count. This will give Harrison on first base a head start with a 3-2 count. And two outs. The ball back into the box on the right-hand side. Sweat sets. Takes two looks. Slide step delivery. Fastball inside. Ball four. That'll be the third walk or free pass on the day for Blake Sweat. And that'll put runners on first and second with two away. And moves us back to the top of the order to Warren, who popped out to the right fielder in his first at bat. Yeah, on the first pitch, Tyler. So Warren hasn't seen the curveball yet. He hasn't seen the other things that Blake has available and he wasn't too good on the timing with his fastball. Riker so this Evans. is still a good matchup for Blake here to get an out. Evans playing behind the runner at first base, and it's a good lead for DeBall at first base. Good lead at second base from Harrison as well. First pitch is off high for ball one. It's not a bad idea to go curveball there, Tyler, where he went after the fastball on the first one. See if you can maybe get him off balance, swing at a first pitch again. But you got to be near the zone. That one's in there, bottom of the zone, four strike one. One one the count. Warren disagreed with that call. Took a little peek at the umpire. 1-1 one, one the count. Playing center field today for the Dons is the 435 batting average. Hitter, the 1-1. One, one. Couple of looks. Goes, tries to go back to the curveball. Not landing it right now. That moves the count to 2-1. He's almost trying to guide it a little too much, Tyler. It looks like that ball's floating up out of his hand. And it's easy to do. Sometimes you just need to remind the pitchers, hey, just throw that thing like a fastball. It's the same motion, same mechanics, just at the end you're going to flick your wrist a little bit. And you don't need to guide it. When you see that ball start to float, sometimes the hand is getting outside of the baseball, Tyler, rather than staying behind the baseball. 2-2, two -two. swing and a miss on a fastball at the belt. 2-2, two -two. now the count. Similar situation to what Wasatch saw themselves in in the top. First inning, had runners on first and second two-way, was able to get the fly out to left field to end the inning. 2-2 two -two the count now with runners on first and second. Sweat comes set out of the stretch. 
Two look. Delivery goes back to the curveball, freezes him, but it's high for ball three. Runners will get another head start here on the full count. Well, he's been alternating each pitch here, right? Curveball, fastball, curveball, fastball, curveball. And this is probably a spot where you need to come back with a fastball, but let's see if he mixes it up. Full count pitch, swung on, and is it fouled off, fouled off. Barely got a piece of it. It goes back to the backstop and will reset still with the count at 3-2. Ty Warren's still behind that fastball. He hasn't really been close to it in the four fastballs that have been around the zone so far. And the elevated fastball seems to be the one he's really struggling with. That's a good spot from Blake. Full count, two outs. Again, runners will get a head start. The pitch, that one misses. Ball four. That's going to be the third free pass of the inning. And bases are now juiced for the shortstop, Will Dart. That's going to bring a trip to the mound from Coach Jacobson. Trip to the mound brought to you by Mirror Lake Station. Best donuts in Utah. Owners David and Kristen Wade have grown to love their Chevron family and appreciate your support. Stop on in to Mirror Lake Station in Camas. Ty, this is less than ideal. You've got the best hitter coming up for Spanish Fork with the bases loaded. Wasatch, though, had a lot of success as Blake was able to send him down looking with a great curveball last time. Dart, as great of a player as he is, Tyler, now in his career against Wasatch, a four-year starter, three for 24. A 125 batting average here for Dart. And you just keep thinking to yourself, a guy who's that good has to break through at some point, but for three years he really hasn't found success against Wasatch. Hopefully Wasatch can keep that recipe going against him. And he comes in with a 364 batting average, five extra base hits, seven RBIs. Has a big RBI chance here to try to tie the game or take the lead in the bottom of the second. Wasatch leading 1-0 here in the bottom of the second. Two outs, base is loaded. Sweat goes back to working out of the windup. Swings at a pitch in the dirt. Christensen able to smother that one. That one really not that close for strike one. Good job by Christensen. That's a good pitch from Blake Tyler. Not a good spot, but it was a good pitch selection. Dart is up there thinking, you've got nowhere to put me. I'm looking for the fastball, and I'm going after it. Blake goes with the curveball. It wasn't close, but Dart's just sitting dead red fastball and swings at a bad pitch anyway. Gets a fastball here. This one's elevated in play to shallow left center field. This is a tough one. Burdett comes up and makes the grab, and Wasad gets out of the bottom of the second. No runs on no hits, no errors. Three are left on base. It's still 1-0 as we move into the third. Attention painters and homeowners. Premium Kelly Moore paint is now available at your neighborhood Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. That's right, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the official authorized Kelly Moore Paints outlet. You can now get premium Kelly Moore paints at your Heber Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. You'll love their high quality, long lasting finishes for any home paint project. So if you're painting a single room, refreshing your front door, or doing a full repaint of your home, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the place to go for fine Kelly Moore paints. Stop by today. Well, folks, spring is near, but have no fear. Country Gardens and Nursery is here for your everyday garden supplies, decor, and more. From our personal gardener to our new bulk yard, where we offer large variety of soil, mulches, and decorative rock. Come see what we have in store. Country Gardens and Nursery, 1401 South, US 189. We'll see you soon and hope to put you in bloom. I'm Walker Kessler, and I play basketball for a living. So I know how important it is to have the support of a team you can trust. That's why I love UCCU. UCCU is more than a credit union. They're a true financial partner, a local team of experts your entire family can trust at every step of your financial journey. Just visit UCCU.com and elevate your banking experience. Unlock your potential at Bonnie Joseph Academy here in Heber. Explore the art of barbering, basic aesthetic, cosmetology, master aesthetic, and nail technician programs. Visit bonniejosephacademy.edu to enroll today. Financial aid is available for qualifying students, and we offer flexible distant education options. Transform your passion into a rewarding career with Bonnie Joseph Academy, where beauty meets expertise. Wasatch High School Sports is on the radio.
Top of the third inning brought to you by Physical at the Fit Stop. Do you sometimes feel dizzy or unstable? If so, Physical at the Fit Stop has good news. Falls are preventable. Call Physical at 435-654-5607 for a free fall risk assessment. Let's see how you can improve your balance and regain your freedom. That's Physical at the Fit Stop. The one run, your physical at the fit stop run, has given Wasatch the lead here as we go into the third. It's 1-0 with Wasatch at the top of the order up. It'll be Bukad Sweat Evans. Lamson starts with an off-speed pitch here to Bukad in there for strike one. Carter grounded out on a barrel up the middle that went off of Lamson to the second baseman. That one's low, moves the count to 1-1. One, one. Cod back into the box, playing shortstop again today. The 1-1. Basketball a little bit up. It's fouled off as he gets a piece of it. Moves the count to 1-2. Ty, what do you think of the BYU basketball hire? Ty, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I don't know enough about it to have much of an opinion, but it seems like it's a decent hire. 1-2 goes with the fastball for strike three. Strikeout number three for Lamson as Card Bukad goes down looking for the first out. Highest paid assistant in the NBA, and according to reports, was actually interviewing for some head coaching jobs in the NBA before ultimately settling and going for being the next head coach at BYU. Well, they had to pay a pretty penny to yeah. get him there, Tyler. Over $30 million on that contract. Fastball is going to be swung on to the first pitch to Blake Sweat, elevated to right field. Right fielder Duvall settles underneath it, makes the grab. Two away. Well, Wasatch was down to two, or had two outs, nobody on in the top of the first before Evans, Baxter, Mahoney went single, single, single to give Wasatch the one-run lead. Evans comes up once again with two outs. They said this guy was the leader for a couple jobs, right? Yeah. The Nets and the Suns. Yeah. So my question is, why didn't he get those jobs? If he's if he's that good of a coach, what was the difference maker? Just you needed a splashy hire, a name like well, Frank have, Vogel? I have those guys made their hires? Has the, have the Nets and oh last year you're saying yeah. the Nets and yeah, the last year. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh one the count is Evans swings at one in the dirt. This one misses outside for ball one. One one now the count. I think the draw is he, this is an NBA guy, right, with the transfer portal world. You have those guys going in the portal, guys looking to get in the NBA. Maybe this is a guy that you can bring in some of those guys and say, hey, I've got connections. I can get you there. That one misses outside for ball two. Two one the count now to Evans. It's not a bad spot on that last yeah. pitch, Tyler. Pretty tight zone. That one misses up. Moves the count to 3-1 here to Evans. Again, on the year, 500 on base percentage. A little check swing single in that first at bat with a 3-2 count. Now finds himself up 3-1. Pitch. Swung on, elevated to shallow left field. Left fielder will settle underneath it, and Peterson will make the grab. Another 1-2-3 inning here for Spanish Fork. No runs on, no hits, and no errors. And it's 1-0 going into the bottom of the third. Hey there, Heber City. Are you tired of dings, dents, and scrapes ruining the beauty of your beloved vehicle? Look no further than Robarge Collision, the ultimate destination for all your auto body needs. At Robarge Collision, they've been offering top-notch collision repairs and outstanding customer service. Their team of expert technicians is passionate about bringing your car back to its original glory no matter the size of damage. Their state-of-the-art facility is equipped with cutting-edge technology, ensuring precise and accurate repairs. They handle it all with precision and care. Chad here from Mountain Wash Trailers. Celebrating 20 years in business, we know you value strength and reliability. Whether it's for work or play, our dump and equipment trailers are built to last. Enclosed cargo trailers for business and fun, or open utility trailers for everything in between. With expert sales, parts, and service, we've got you covered. Mountain Wash Trailers is always right behind you. Visit us at mountainwashtrailer.com or stop by at 1470 South Highway 40 here in Heber. Wasatch High School Sports is on the radio. Bomb of the Third brought to you by Wasatch Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine, your rehabilitation specialist dedicated to your total recovery from all injuries. Let Dan Ivey and his team get you back to 100%. Still 1-0 as we go into the bottom of the third. It's 3-4-5 up for the Dons. Nelson, Scott, and Anderson. Nelson, the best power on the team, Tyler. Two home runs on the season. 
off of his bat. A couple doubles and a triple. Eight extra base hits. Pretty solid number. Blake's going to work out of the windup. Has yet to give up a hit today. No hits. Have five base runners that have reached base. Four, three by walk, one by hit by pitch, and one on an error. Misses high for ball one here to Nielsen. That one's in there for a strike. Moves the count to 1-1. One, one. The 1-1 one, one goes back to the curveball. That one's going to be fouled off for strike two. 1-2 one, two now the count. Just want to start thinking math with you a little bit, though, Tyler. Five free base runners. If you get an average of about four pitches having to pitch five more batters. You're now 20 extra pitches for Blake. Nice Another pitch there. Another swing and the miss. It gets into the dirt. Christensen takes his time, throws it down to Evans for the first out. Third strikeout of the game for Blake Sweat. But just how good Blake has been, Tyler, even with that strikeout, he's only at 46 pitches now on that. And if you can remove those walks, Tyler, and those errors, He's going to be able to take you six or seven innings, but you just start losing pitches when you give so many free passes away. We'll bring up the second baseman, Scott. A big swing and a miss on a fastball, probably out of the zone. 0-1 the count here to the second baseman. Again, a 350 batting average coming into today. Walked in his first at bat. That one misses high, 1-1. One, one. Third baseman, Anderson, on deck for Spanish Fork. The 1-1 one, one goes back to the curve ball inside ball one, or ball two, excuse me. <coughs> Lacrosse has had quite the break tie. They're back in action tomorrow. We'll have that action for you here on 94.5 The Peak. Taking on, is it Spanish Fork as well tomorrow? Maple Mountain. Maple Mountain. Maple Mountain tomorrow. Yeah, been nearly two full weeks, Tyler, since they've been in action. 3-1. This one is fouled off out of play on the right side, so full count here to Scott. Lacrosse team still sitting at five and four, Tyler, after they got that victory over Mountain Ridge right before spring break. Erker leading the team with 46 points in nine games. Pretty incredible number there. Back into the box is Scott on the right hand side. It's a full count with one away. Sweat, the windup, the pitch. Goes back to the curveball. It's going to be a high chopper to Sweat. Sweat fills it cleanly. Throws it to first base to Evans. Two away. Good play from Blake, Tyler. He looks really good today. Throwing with great velocity, crisp breaking pitch. And that throw he just made kind of had him baffled last week, Tyler. That was a tough throw for him on a couple occasions. Looked to be more confident there, Tyler. Calmly was able to catch it, take his time, gather his body. And throw a nice little throw over there to first base. Just nice and easy. Softball team currently at home today, taking on Salem Hills High School. Had a rough season as well, 2 and 14 on the year. 2 0 here to uh, Anderson, the third baseman. 2 and 14, but kind of like this baseball team, Tyler, where they continue to compete. It's not that they're getting throttled in all their games that they're playing. They're they're in the mix. They just can't quite find a way to get a W on the board. 2-0 the count. That one in there for a strike. 2-1 the count. Haley McNaughton, the pitcher there for softball. And then Reagan Price, one of the best hitters on the team for softball. Give them a couple of shout-outs. Swing and a miss on a fastball. Moves the count to 2-2. Two, two. Well, no reason to go away from that, Tyler. Go right back to that same pitch. Anderson was nowhere near that fastball. 2-2 two, two count, Sweat with two outs, delivers. Low for ball, three. 3-2, three, now the count. The payoff pitch goes back to the fastball, and that one's going to be roped up the middle for the first hit of the game. As Anderson was sitting fastball, was able to rip a fastball right back up the middle. And Spanish Fork once again has a runner on base. Yeah, that one kind of got a little more, I think, over the middle part of the plate than Blake probably wanted. Bring up the pitcher, Riley Lampson, was hit by pitch in his first at bat. Has nine RBIs and three doubles on the year. Has really settled down nicely on the mound, thrown two 
perfect innings on the last two innings. That one that gets away from Sweat. Christensen able to come up out of his stance, makes the grab for ball one. one the count. Sweat takes a peek at the runner at first base. Long look. Now delivers. It's a fastball. Swing and a miss for strike one. I never asked you back. What would you rather have, an NBA ticket or a hockey ticket? Well, the nuance, I, I'd go hockey, right? Haven't ever been to an NHL hockey game. I used to love going to the Grizzly games. Haven't been for a while. But same with you, have been to that. This one's going to be elevated to center field. Is it going to carry? Carries far enough for Zach Burdett to come up and make the grab. Nice barrel there from Lamson, but Wasatch once again gets out of the inning. No runs on one hit, no errors, and one runner's left on base. It's still 1-0 going into the fourth. Are you ready for lunch? Well, the Dairy Keen, home of the train, is serving the best foods with friends and family in the Valley and have been the winner of Best of State for 19 years. They've recently been named the official Best of Utah for their milkshakes. You've got to try their delicious train burger with an Oreo shake. They also have those yummy salads that just hit the spot, or you can try a turkey breast sandwich that tickles the taste buds. They've proudly been serving the Heber Valley for 75 years. That's the Dairy Keen, home of the train, serving deliciousness daily. Stop in today. <laughs> Attention all sideliners. Economists and investors have said recently, if you are saving money and waiting to buy, I'd reconsider even at current interest rates. Reports have shown that the masses move or not move based on the behavior of interest rates. This is sidelining in our current environment. With most people using this information as their playbook, it leaves everyone doing the same thing at the same time, resulting in a basic but serious future crisis of supply and demand. So, come see me at Guild Mortgage and let's put you in the game. Thompson on MLS 257849. Good mortgage company is an equal housing lender. MLS 3274. All loans are subject to underwriter approval. Terms and conditions may apply. Subject to change without notice. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Why would you wander around a warehouse store looking for paint when you could just swing by your neighborhood Ace? In addition to Ace's award-winning service, we have top-rated paint brands. Plus, our color matching technology allows us to match any color. So stop wandering and start painting. Head to your neighborhood Ace today. Timberline Ace Hardware, serving the Heber Valley for over 50 years, is conveniently located at 737 South Main Street in the heart of Heber City. Five, four, three, two, one. KTMP Heber City and live sports coverage with Ty and Ty. Top of the fourth inning brought to you by Gravity Coalition, who offers the best in bikes, skis, snowboards, skateboards, and more in the Heber Valley. They've got personalized service, sales, and repair for the gear you love. Gravity Coalition, located in Midway, Utah, or you can find them at gravitycoalition.com. This is a cool shop. Baxter Mahoney Faller will lead it off here in the top of the fourth. Wasatch leading 1-0 on the Heber Appliance scoreboard. Baxter singled down the first base side in his first at bat. And he's going to let strike one go by. Nice pitch on the outside corner for strike one. 280 on the year with the double. The sophomore back into the box on the left-hand side. The pitch swung on. It's going to be a fister to the third baseman. Comes up, makes the underhand grab for the first out of the inning. Brings up Grant Mahoney, who singled with two outs to bring in the lone run. Now has 12 RBIs on the year to lead the team. Batting average up over 370. Again, the designated hitter today. The freshman faller on deck. One away. Seven straight batters have been retired now by Lamson. Actually, eight straight going back to that first inning. Mahoney was the last runner to reach base. Takes ball one. And now swings and probably would have been ball two. Fouls that one off. 1-1 one, one now the count. Yeah, probably would have been ball two, but too hard to lay off that one, Tyler. Fastball right around the top of the zone. That's where he got his good barrel last time in his last at bat. Don't blame him for getting after it. 1-2 there. Is that one in there for a strike just below the knees? Lamson rolling, working out of the windup. Delivers the 1-2. Goes to the off speed in the dirt for ball two. 2-2 two, two the count. Ty, were you a big guy trying to look for tipped pitches when you were a batter no. going up there? I, I, and so a couple of things. We, we were still 3A. We didn't see a lot of great pitchers when we were in high school, but I could see the spin really well, and I was an inside-out hitter anyway, so 
fastball, curveball, it didn't matter what it was. I was going to be going the opposite way with it, so I didn't try to see the pitches too much. Swing and a miss there on a nice pitch on the inside part of the plate. Strikeout number four for Lamson. It's watching a Braves-Astros game a couple days ago, Tyler, and they were talking about how good these big league pitchers are at picking pitches, and uh, one of these pitchers' signs that when a guy signed with this other team, Tyler, he went and talked to him about the way he was picking his pitches. It was actually what he was doing with his tongue, Tyler, oh, no before kidding. the pitch. When he would throw a breaking pitch, he would do something different with his tongue. And so these little things that you can pick up on, these ticks from the pitchers. One, oh, no, one reason I asked that, Tyler, is when you got to that one-two count on Mahoney, um, the Spanish fork pitcher emphatically shook yes to what the catcher put down in what looked to be an obvious curveball count, and he came back with a fastball, wondering if that's a tip here that you can look for. That 2-1 is in there for a strike. So, sorry, 2-0 is in there for a strike to move the count to 2-1. Fowler popped out of the first baseman in his first at bat. Playing second base today for Wasatch. The 2-1. Inside corner. Got the inside corner for strike two. 2-2 two -two the count. Nice pitch there from Lamson. O two 2 2 Fowler gets in the boss but asks for time. And we'll be back at it still with the count 2-2 two -two with two away. The pitch. Swing and a miss at a ball outside of the zone. Gets into the dirt. Catcher will throw it down to first base. Ten straight batters have been retired since giving up that run in the top of the first. It's still one nothing. After no runs on no hits and no errors, we're going into the fourth. Hi, this is Nicole with Mountain Refined Furnishings and Flooring. And if you didn't know, we've recently partnered with Mattress Warehouse of Utah to bring you the largest selection of mattresses around. The team at Mountain Refined prides themselves on making your home a place where you love to be. We offer a large selection of furnishings, flooring, window treatments, gifts, decor, and so much more. If you haven't been by lately, stop and check it out. You'll be pleasantly surprised. We're located at 480 North Main Street. Napa Know How. Your local Napa Auto Parts, Wasatch Auto Parts at 105 North Main Street in Heber City stocks auto parts, tools and equipment, and many other items for heavy duty trucks, marine, and farming equipment. Stop in today at Wasatch Auto Parts, 105 North Main Street in Heber City, a proud sponsor of Wasatch Was Sports. Napa Know How. Hi, this is Kendall Crittenden, Wasatch County Council member and a member of the Caring Community Coalition. Did you know that kids are at a greater risk of experimenting with alcohol and drugs between the hours of 3 and 6 p.m.? Many parents are still at work this time of day. Check in with your kids. Find out where your kids will be, who they'll be with, and what they will be doing. Brought to you by Wasatch Behavioral Health and the Caring Community Coalition. And now, back to the action. Wasatch High School Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Bottom of the fourth inning brought to you by Heber Appliance, Mattress, and Furniture. When you're down to your final out and your fridge goes out, turn your drop the ball into a touch them all at Heber Appliance. Increase your at-home satisfaction with Heber Appliance, Furniture, and Mattress. Ty, before you get going, i got a quick question for you. At, at these games, we've seen a lot of baseball games over the years broadcasting here and been able to watch in a lot of different venues. We're kind of side behind home plate here, Tyler. Pretty good view here. But watching over the years all the wanderers, you know, of uh, spectators that go all over the place, what's the best place for you to watch a baseball game? Like high school? What location? Yeah, just any baseball game. Oh, like at, on the field, like where like you want to be. If you're going to watch a baseball game, yeah, you're not a part of the game yeah. going on. Where's the best place to watch? I it? like I like to be right behind one of the dugouts, probably the first base dugout, the home dugout, for for this the pure like be able to see reaction of players. I think you get a little bit of action on the foul ball situation. Might die over there <laughs> with the foul ball situation, <laughs> but yeah, I, I like to be. A lot of people like just behind home play. I like to be just above that first base dugout. 0-2, and that curveball just misses here. It's going to be 7-8-9, Nielsen, Shipman, Duvall. 1-2 the count now here to Shipman. What, or to Nielsen, excuse me. Ty, what about you? Do you have a spot that you foul ball on the 
Ty, it, your choice isn't bad, but it's hard to analyze the game from there. It's hard to see all the action and the movement, you know, behind home plate. Maybe elevated, though, yeah, to so your Tyler. So not the, the lower bowl level, right. but also not the nosebleeds. That next level is probably the right so tier. So it's interesting you say that because the one Rockies game I went to, those were our seats. We weren't nose, nosebleeds up at the top. Only been to we're one Rockies midline. game, Tyler? Been to a Rockies game, and that was where our seats were, right behind home plate on that second level, and that was nice. It was a, it was a good spot to be. Garrett Christensen's going to take a couple, and that's going to fill up the count at 3-2, and he's going to take a timeout and go out and talk to Blake, I think, just to kind of shake off a yeah, that missed That missed the pad, Tyler. Got yes. him a little high. Is that one where you go out to the pitcher and maybe have some choice words for him, Ty, <laughs> and say, what the, you know, are you doing out Garrett's here? done a good job blocking a lot of Blake's balls in the dirt today, hasn't he? Blake's been pretty good, but he's beat Garrett up a little bit behind the dish. I don't think Garrett had many things to say there other than take this back. I'm going to slowly walk back yeah. here to home plate. Garrett doesn't usually say much anyways, so... <laughs> In fact, I'd, like to, I'd like to have him mic'd up at the, when he goes <laughs> to visit the pitcher. I'd love to hear what he's saying out of the pitcher's mound. What's got the worst like a seat language. in the, uh, a diamond? It would have to be like right field outfield, line. Behind foul the, territory. Or behind the up foul nose pole. Blue. Yeah, yeah. Foul, foul pole. Anywhere behind a pole is not yeah. good. That's why Fenway is not that good of a park to go watch a game, Ty. The payoff pitch is going to be a slow ground ball to the second baseman. Faller fields a clean, gets it out of his glove quickly, throws him out at first base for the first out of the inning. Good play there from Fowler, Tyler. Hasn't had a lot of action coming his way today. Stayed locked in and engaged on that slow roller. Attacked it. Made a good little throw over there to first base. Bring up the first baseman, Shipman. Comes in with an over 300 batting average. Flew out to center field in his first at bat. So that brings up another question, Tyler. The most overrated sports experiences. Like going to Fenway Park is really cool. Fenway is really cool. But if you're trying to watch a game, unless you got $500 to spend at Fenway Park... You're not going to have a very good seat. They've got those foul poles, not foul poles, excuse me, those posts to hold up um, their lower bowl seats. And anywhere you go, you're going to have a pole in your way unless you've spent a pretty penny to get down there close to the field. No balls, one strike on the foul ball. Second pitch here to first baseman Shipman is going to be swung on and fouled off again. That'll move the count to 0-2. I'll say 50-yard line seats. So BYU, you know how they have their best seat in the house mm -hmm. and they have like uh, – uh, recliner there on the 50 yard. That's a terrible seat. Like you can't see anything on the field on the 50 yard line. Like I think that's the most overrated seat. That's not an experience, but I, I do not like sitting on the 50 yard line at a football game. O2 curveball gets him to go out of the box. Oh, tight. He recovers nicely. Your, takes a little practice swing. <laughs> your hitter on deck thought that one was over too. He was jumping and thought he had just watched his buddy get rung up, backing out of the box. The one two. Goes back to the fastball. Oh, reward one of those, Tyler. Doesn't those are get two either really one of pitches. them. Nice pitch on the inside with the curveball, and then low and outside. Just missed both of those. Moves the count to 2-2. Two, two. That one's going to be in the dirt and nearly bounces over the backstop as it bounces off of Christensen. And just like that, the 0-2 is now full count. I tell you, it's probably the right call on both of those pitches, the curveball and that low fastball not being called. All day, that low fastball has not been called. But, oh man, you'd just love to have that reward because it was such a good spot. Well, it's not rewarded. It's four straight balls. Puts Shipman on base. That's going to be the fifth walk of the day. And Spanish Fork has been able to get a base runner each of the first four innings now. It's going to bring up the number nine hitter, Duvall, who walked in his first at bat, and then we're back up to the top of the order to Warren. Haven't seen any... Small ball at all. A little square of the bat. He pulls back for strike one. Haven't seen any bunts or any movement on the base pass yet today. No balls, one strike. His Duvall did square, but then pulled back last second on the strike. The 0-1. Now swings it. It's going to be a ground ball to the second baseman. Fowler to Bukad. Bukad hesitates. Throws it to first base. Still gets him in time on the 4-6-3 double play. Nice turn for Wasatch, and they get out of the inning. No runs on, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. Wasatch takes the lead into the fifth inning, 1-0.
Attention painters and homeowners. Premium Kelly Moore paint is now available at your neighborhood Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. That's right, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the official authorized Kelly Moore Paints outlet. You can now get premium Kelly Moore paints at your Heber Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. You'll love their high quality, long lasting finishes for any home paint project. So if you're painting a single room, refreshing your front door, or doing a full repaint of your home, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the place to go for fine Kelly Moore paints. Stop by today. Well, folks, spring is near, but have no fear. Country Gardens and Nursery is here for your everyday garden supplies, decor, and more. From our personal gardener to our new bulk yard, where we offer a large variety of soil, mulches, and decorative rock. Come see what we have in store. Country Gardens and Nursery, 1401 South, US 189. We'll see you soon and hope to put you in bloom. I'm Walker Kessler, and I play basketball for a living. So I know how important it is to have the support of a team you can trust. That's why I love UCCU. UCCU is more than a credit union. They're a true financial partner, a local team of experts your entire family can trust at every step of your financial journey. Just visit UCCU.com and elevate your banking experience. Wasatch High School Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Top of the fifth brought to you by Physical at the Fit Stop. Do you sometimes feel dizzy or unstable? If so, Physical at the Fit Stop has good news. Falls are preventable. Give them a call at 435-654-5607 for a free fall risk assessment. Let's see how you can improve your balance and regain your freedom. Oh, that's a good drag bun there from Jacob Bradshaw as he is going to lay that down for a single, and it's going to get out of play, and Bradshaw is going to get second base. Right, there's a line, an invisible line that's drawn from the fence out to the outfield. You have spectators over there, and you can't see the line from here. And the right fielder was trying to keep it in play, wasn't able to do so. So the nice single turns into a double, and Wasatch has the leadoff guy on base after having 10 guys straight retired. That's a perfect bunt, Tyler. I was hoping Jacob would lay something down there like that. We've kind of hit the point of the game where... Lamson is humming up there on the mound. His defense is probably just getting a little bored there behind him. And right off the bat, Bradshaw puts a little pressure on him. Left-handed batter coming out of the box. A lot of speed. Good bunt down the third baseline. No chance. In fact, I can't believe the third baseman threw it, Tyler. Bradshaw was already across the bag before he threw it and gave him the extra base. I think it surprised the first baseman a little bit, Ty, to be honest. He had kind of come off the bag and it was surprised when that ball came. He's able to get by him on the air. So a hit in an air, and Wasatch has a runner on second. Shaw's going to square for the first pitch, and he's going to get a piece of it, but it's going to go back to the backstop for strike one. First baseman is playing extremely shallow on the first base side. Another square. The body's going to go. That one down. Nice diving play. What a play by the third baseman, Anderson. That ball got up in the air just enough, and Anderson comes in and makes the diving play one away. Ty, that was a great play from the third baseman flying in there like a rocket, and it's do or die because if he doesn't get that, Tyler, now Wasatch has a couple runners on with nobody out. Really risky gamble to go dive after that thing, but it paid off for him. He's going to bring up Garrett Christensen, the catcher, popped up to the first baseman in his first at bat, and then we're back up to the top of the order to Bacot, who's on deck. Lamson comes set, takes a peek at Bradshaw, delivers. Swung on on the fastball, and it's fair down the third base side. Bradshaw had to pause for a second to make sure that was go. The throw is not in time, and the one-out single from Christensen gives Wasatch the 2-0 lead. Speed is such a weapon, Tyler. Bradshaw even freezing on that scores very easily on that ball, Tyler, and you saw it, the bunt getting down the line. Puts pressure on the defense, and it just creates holes out there defensively. Good job from Garrett to come through, and like we talked about in the Doria Central Keys of the game, Tyler, he's not waiting to get behind in the count. He looks for the first good available fastball, jumps on it, and drives in that run that's standing there at second base. It's going to bring in the speed-up runner, Kyron Stocking, who will be at first base, and then Carter Bucod will be in the box. Grounded out to the second baseman and struck out looking in his second at bat. His first at bat, a good barrel right back up the middle. Couple of looks over to Stocking. That one misses low in the dirt for ball one. 
I think Carter is a good hit and run candidate, Tyler, if you get to the right count here. Second already shaded over significantly. There's a big hole over on that right side. With the first baseman holding on the runner. Runner's going to go. It's a pitch out of the zone. Bukad does swing at it for strike one. But Kyron Stocking able to swipe the bag easily for your first Gravity Coalition stolen base of the ball game. Ty, I think that's an important ball for Carter to swing on, too. That ball is up so high. The catcher's having to go jump on it, and, and it's one of those that you ask yourself, why is he swinging at that? But a ball that's up like that, the catcher would love to be able to stand up and step into that to make a throw down. By swinging, Carter's able to keep that catcher back and keep him off balance. 1-1 one, one the count here to Bukad with a duck on the pond. Wasatch with just an RBA single by Christensen in the same situation. The 1-1. One, one. Swung on it. It's going to try to go to that 3-4 hole. The runner will be able to advance to third base. Nice play from the second baseman. Throws it over to first base for the second out. And Wasatch has a runner on third with two away. It's just funny how the game changes, right? Because if that was the ball that he had hit on the previous pitch, that's going to be a base hit. Because that second baseman is shaded over and covering uh, without any attention to where the ball is going on the swing, Tyler, on the previous pitch. And that would have been a base hit. But when you have the runner at second... It moved that second baseman back over, and he was able to cover that spot a little more easily. Brings up Blake Sweat, who's 0 for 2 today with a strikeout and a flyout to right field. First pitch of the at-bats in there for strike one. Had a three-hit day against Orem on Monday, which bumped his batting average all the way up to 340. Has four extra base hits on the year and five RBIs. Deal one pitch from Lampson. Swung on and fouled off, and it'll stay fouled down the first base side. 0-2 now the count. Got a little bit fooled by that curveball. See if Lamson decides to go back to it here. 0-2 the count. Riker Evans Struck on him out on the outer half in his first at bat, Tyler. Fastball hard and outside. The 0-2. And he gets him swinging again. That one's in the dirt. Blake's going to hustle down to first base, taking his time, barely gets him out at first base, but that will get him out of the inning. One run comes in on two hits, one error, and one is left on base. Wasatch takes the 2-0 lead as we move into the Guild Mortgage fifth inning stretch. Tom Stone at Guild Mortgage has loan options to fit every situation, from down payment assistance programs for first-time home buyers to government-sponsored programs for military families and rural residents or jumper loans in high-cost markets. Tom Stone at Guild Mortgage has it all. Ty, throw it over to you for our fifth inning stretch game summary. Ty Blake Sweat throwing a pitching gem here. Wasatch leading 2-0. They've out hit Spanish Fork 5-1. And Sweat has been outstanding for Wasatch. The Was got their first two batters out. Bukad and Sweat went down in the top of the first. And then he had a sweet little three hit in a row action going from Wasatch. Riker Evans got a full count single to right field. Baxter got a first pitch single to right field. And then Grant Mahoney was able to drive in Evans on uh, his at-bat, and Wasatch took a 1-0 lead. At that point, it became a pitching duel, Tyler. Wasatch has been able to retire Spanish Fork in all four innings without any runs, but it hasn't been without problems. Spanish has had a base runner on in every single inning and multiple base runners on in three out of the four innings here, Tyler. But Sweat has still only given up one run on the day. Sweat has gone four innings pitched. He's at 75 pitches, one hit. Four base on balls and four strikeouts. He does have a hit by pitch as well. So five free passes with walks or hit by pitch. Wasatch also has an error on the game. But Sweat's been able to work out of the jam every single time. And in large part because he's had that weapon of being able to punch guys out with the strikeout. Tyler, four on the day. And then Wasatch just got an insurance run in the top of the fifth as they scored their second run of the game. Tyler, as you just heard, Garrett Christensen getting an RBI single to score Jacob Bradshaw, who singled on a bunt to start off the inning and Wasatch leads 2-0. Five hits on the day for Wasatch and those five batters who have hits are Evans, Christensen, Bradshaw, Baxter, and Mahoney. And the Wasatch leads Spanish Fork 2-0 heading to the bottom of the fifth. The Gordon Law Group is your full-service local law firm practicing in all areas of the law. They take pride in saying, yeah, we do that. Sponsors of our game summary. It's time now for the bottom of the fifth brought to you by Bank of Utah who has accounts for everyone from personal and business to sorry, personal and business checking and savings accounts to mortgage and consumer loans. Visit our friendly Heber branch at 620 West 100 South, and together we'll build relationships that last. Bank of Utah is an equal housing lender. It's top of the order up for the Spanish Fork Dons. One, two, three. Warren Dart Nilsson. Warren comes up 2-0 after popping out to right field and 
a bunt, or sorry, a base on balls. 3-0 now the count here to Warren after three straight balls to start off here in the bottom of the fifth. Squared to bunt on that 2-0. Now gets a 3-0. That one's in there for a strike. 3-1 now the count. Over a 400 batting average on the year for the center fielder. This one's going to be swung on rope to left field. And it's going to get down. And a single for Warren. He's now one for two on the day. And a leadoff single for Spanish Fork. And once again, they've got a base runner on base. Have stranded six base runners today. And now with 2-3-4 up, seeing if they can break the goose egg off the scoreboard with the leadoff guy on. So has been able to get the leadoff hitter out in three out of the four innings before that one, Tyler. The only inning he didn't was in the second inning when he hit Lamson as the leadoff hitter. He was able to work out of that jam. He'll have to do it again here with the leadoff hitter getting on. Runner's going to go. It's going to be a hit and run back to Blake. Blake's going to try for the double play. Not in time at first base, but does get the runner at first base. So the 1-4-3 double play is not in time, but he does get the runner out at first base on the hit and run. It's good execution from Blake, Fowler, and Evans on that ball, Tyler. Blake turned and did not hesitate and went there, even though the runner was in motion, was going to be safe. He just didn't hesitate there, and that gave Fowler enough time to get the ball over to first to still get the out. And Fowler was hustling over there on that bat, Tyler. Ball in play. He got over there. Blake was able to throw it with confidence. And if there's any hesitation, now you're going to have two runners on with nobody out. So duck on the pond is Warren at second base with the number three hitter, Nilsson. 22 RBIs. He's going to swing it an off-speed pitch. Tough play here from Sweat. Bobbles, throws it to Evans, gets it out in time at first base. Runner does advance to third base, but two away. I think that ball might have been cut a little bit. Slice. They're going to kick that ball out of there. Blake Sweat does a good job of recovering. That ball had some weird spin on it. Was able to get yeah. it in his hand and over to Evans. It's a really just tricky play that he had to do, Tyler. It was it was a funky spin coming off the bat over there towards the first baseman, but it's one of those balls that will never make it to first base. It's dying with a really soft spin. Blake had to hustle over there as the ball's tailing to the line. Tried to glove it, and it hit into his glove, but then kind of bounced all over with the weird spin. Able to keep composure and handle it, get it over to first for the out. This one's roped down the left field line, but goes foul for strike one. Runner on third base. Spanish Fork still with no runs in on the ball game. That was a good barrel there from Scott. He walked and grounded out to the pitcher in his last at bat. Was on that fastball that went foul. Yeah, you can see this inning, Tyler. Blake started the first hitter with a breaking pitch, and you can see why. Spanish Fork, third time through the lineup, is kind of sitting dead red on that first pitch fastball, trying to get after it there. The 0-1, tried to go back to the off speed. That one's high. 1-1, one, one, now the count. Ty, put you on the spot. What's the key to the lead right now for Wasatch, brought to you by Dorius Dental? Ty's getting hits with runners in scoring position. Wasatch hasn't had many opportunities, but when they've gotten them there, they've executed. Bottom falls out of that curveball for strike two as Scott swings and misses. One, two, now the count. Key to the lead brought to you by Dorius Dental, who offers no surprises in dental treatment. Dr. Dorius and Dr. Proctor love to make your mouth smile. Learn more at DoriusDental.com. One, two, the count. Runner on third base. Wasatch trying to get out of another inning. The pitch. Misses upstairs. Two, two, the count. And time to go back and finish that thought. Wasatch has had four bats with runners in scoring position, and they're two for four. And that really makes the difference in the ball game. Spanish has had more opportunities than Wasatch with runners in scoring position, but the Wasatch have been able to strand them. The 2-2 two -two goes back to the fastball, fouls that one off, keeps the count at 2-2. Two -two. Two, two the count still. Back into the windup. The pitch tries to go fastball. I think Scott was looking curveball tie. He was a little bit off, but it pitch misses down, and that will fill up the count at 3-2. Runner on third. Blake back into the windup. The payoff pitch. Swung on. This one's roped to left field, and the goose eggs off the inning on the two-out single from Scott. And Spanish Fork has one run on the board on the two-out single. Yeah, and they have some life in that dugout. First life we've seen from them all game long. Coach Jakeson wants to talk this one over here, Tyler. Blake up to 89 pitches on that one. 
It'll be Anderson who will come up. He's a 448 hitter, singled up the middle in his last at bat, has six RBIs on the year. And I think we're going to go ahead and see a pitching change. Great outing there from Blake Sweat. We'll go ahead and take a break. Pitching change brought to you by Mirror Lake Station. Wasatch leads 2-1. to one. Big O Tires in Heber is your one-stop shop for tires and service. What was once Point S is now Big O Tires. Same service, but different name. We're locally owned and operated and want to help you get your vehicle ready to road trip this summer. Stop in for all your name brand tires, oil changes, alignments, brakes, batteries, shocks, struts, and a whole lot more. Plus, Big O Tires offers financing options to fit any budget or any situation. Visit us today. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Hey there, Heber City. Are you tired of dings, dents, and scrapes ruining the beauty of your beloved vehicle? Look no further than Robarge Collision, the ultimate destination for all your auto body needs. At Robarge Collision, they've been offering top-notch collision repairs and outstanding customer service. Their team of expert technicians is passionate about bringing your car back to its original glory, no matter the size of damage. Their state-of-the-art facility is equipped with cutting-edge technology, ensuring precise and accurate repairs. They handle it all with precision and care. Chad here from Mountain Wash Trailers. Celebrating 20 years in business, we know you value strength and reliability. Whether it's for work or play, our dump and equipment trailers are built to last. Enclosed cargo trailers for business and fun, or open utility trailers for everything in between. With expert sales, parts, and service, we've got you covered. Mountain Wash Trailers is always right behind you. Visit us at mountainwashtrailer.com or stop by at 1470 South Highway 40 here in Heber. Unlock your potential at Bonnie Joseph Academy here in Heber. Explore the art of barbering, basic aesthetic, cosmetology, master aesthetic, and nail technician programs. Visit bonniejosephacademy.edu to enroll today. Financial aid is available for qualifying students, and we offer flexible distant education options. Transform your passion into a rewarding career with Bonnie Joseph Academy, where beauty meets expertise. Wasatch High School Sports is on the radio. Pitching change brought to you by Mirror Lake Station. Voted the best donuts in Utah. Owners David and Kristen Wade invite you to swing by and say hello this season at Mirror Lake Station. So a little bit of confusion on the substitutions. Burdett, I think they've, they've taken Mahoney and put him into the game at second base which means the Burdett needs to come out. So as the D, if the DH comes into the game, the guy he's DHing for needs to come out. And so that's going to put Blake in center. Bradshaw will stay in right field. Mahoney is going to be playing second base as Braxton Faller is on the mound now for Wasatch with two outs, the 2-1 lead, and a runner on first base. Yeah, I'm thinking my way through that, Tyler, and I think that's probably a move. Coach Jacobson would like to get back, if we're being honest. I, I, I think he'd like to keep Zach out there in center field. And so if he could redo his lineup and have that work a little different, he could. But his hands were tied once he put Fowler on the mound. That's where he had to go. Swung on and fouled off. Fowler comes on. Ty, do you have – I should have looked up over the, over the break for accident stats on the year. He's going to come in and get strike one here to Anderson. Oh, one to count. Pickoff move. It's a good one. Did he get him in time? No, not in time. But that's a good pickoff move there from Fowler. Just missed. And we'll reset with no balls, one strike. Yeah, Ty, I do have Braxton's stuff on the year here. He's got 17.2 innings pitched, 5.15 ERA, 1-1 one one on the season in six appearances. The 0-1 goes with the slide step. Off speed, up in the zone, but it's called a strike. So 0-2, now the count. Yeah, it was a generous strike call, Tyler, on that curveball. Haven't seen that one called today as often. A little different, though. His his curveball doesn't break down as much, Tyler, as Blake's does. So Blake dives a little bit. It has to start a little higher. Braxton doesn't do that same motion. 0-2. That one's fouled back. Keeps counted 0-2 with two away. 2-1 to one the score. Wasatch with one run in the first and the fifth. Spanish Fork just scored their first run here in the bottom of the fifth. Baller comes set with the 0-2. Another pickoff move, not in time. Keeps counted 0-2. 
Braxton has given up 13 earned runs on the year, Tyler. Nine base on balls to go with 12 strikeouts in that 17.2 innings pitched. Runner goes on the 0-2. This one's elevated to deep left field. Baxter going back and can't come up with it. Runner's going to score from first base. It's going to be a double for Anderson. Or excuse me, yeah, for Anderson. And Spanish Fork ties the ball game up on the two out, two strike, double. Good hitting from Spanish Fork in this inning, Tyler. They're capitalizing on mistakes from Wasatch. And they've tied it up. Unfortunately, we've seen this before down here, haven't we? Wasatch plays the majority of the game better than the Dons. And the Dons find a way in the fifth, sixth, and seventh inning to get back in it. Wasatch is going to need to close it down quickly, Ty. You got the go ahead run standing at second base. Pinch runner is going to come into the game as Jackie Sorensen. He'll pinch run for the third baseman, Anderson, who's now two for three on the day. He singled up the middle in his second at bat and doubled to left field barely. It's going to bring up the pitcher Lamson trying to help himself out and give himself the lead. Hit by pitch and lined out to the center fielder on a good at bat. And Lamson below 250 on the year but he does convert with RBIs Tyler. You can knock in the runs when it counts. Braxton needs to be careful here. No balls, two strikes with the runner on second base. The pitch that one's in there for a strike just below the knees. A good spa day is your favorite hometown place to relax and unwind. They offer massage, skin care, nail care, and unique relaxing spa packages. Pick a good spa day to be your spa. Sponsor of our play of the game that will be brought to you afterwards. Off-speed pitch is going to be elevated to shallow left field. This is a tough play. Bukad going back and makes the grab. And Wasatch gets out of the inning, but not before two runs come in on three hits. No errors, and one runner is left on base. It's 2-2 two to two as we go into the sixth. Hi, this is Nicole with Mountain Refined Furnishings and Flooring. And if you didn't know, we've recently partnered with Mattress Warehouse of Utah to bring you the largest selection of mattresses around. The team at Mountain Refined prides themselves on making your home a place where you love to be. We offer a large selection of furnishings, flooring, window treatments, gifts, decor, and so much more. If you haven't been by lately, stop and check it out. You'll be pleasantly surprised. We're located at 480 North Main Street. Are you ready for lunch? Well, the Dairy King, home of the train, is serving the best foods with friends and family in the Valley and have been the winner of Best of State for 19 years. They've recently been named the official Best of Utah for their milkshakes. You've got to try their delicious train burger with an Oreo shake. They also have those yummy salads that just hit the spot. Or you can try a turkey breast sandwich that tickles the taste buds. They've proudly been serving the Heber Valley for 75 years. That's the Dairy King, home of the train, serving deliciousness daily. Stop in today. <laughs> Attention all sideliners. Economists and investors have said recently, if you are saving money and waiting to buy, I'd reconsider even at current interest rates. Reports have shown that the masses move or not move based on the behavior of interest rates. This is sidelining in our current environment. With most people using this information as their playbook, it leaves everyone doing the same thing at the same time, resulting in a basic but serious future crisis of supply and demand. So, come see me at Guild Mortgage and let's put you in the game. Thompson on NMLS 257849. Good mortgage company is an equal housing lender. NMLS 3274. All loans are subject to underwriter approval. Terms and conditions may apply. Subject to change without notice. And now, back to the action. Wasatch High School Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Top of the six, it's a tie 2-2 ball game on the Heber Appliance scoreboard. This action brought to you by Wasatch Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine, your rehabilitation specialist dedicated to your total recovery from all injuries. Let Dan Ivey and his team get you back to 100%. New arm on the mound for Spanish Fork. Yeah, Ty, this is Marziel, 8.1 innings pitched on the year, ERA of 5.88. Gave up 12 hits on the season so far, 13 runs on those 12 hits, 10 base on balls, and only 8 innings pitched. So command seems to be a little more of an issue, issue here for Marziel. Yeah, a little surprised at this move, Tyler. Yeah, I, I am a little surprised really by this game. move. I, I, both pitching changes were a little earlier than I would have thought. The three, or it's going to be three, four, five up for Wasatch, and Riker Evans is going to get things rolling with a single down the left field line, and Wasatch has the leadoff guy on with the tie ball game, two to two, with Crew Baxter coming up to the plate. Two for three on the day now for Riker Evans, single to right field and a single to left field. Wasatch is in business. 
It'll be Baxter, who's one for two. He singled down the right field line and then popped out to the third baseman. Well, you're going to ask him to lay down a bunt here, I would imagine, Tyler. Get it down in the grass. Had a couple pop-up bunts. He's going to square it. He's going to hit a line drive to the first baseman, who almost comes up with the grab. Say hit it. It was a bunt that uh, he almost hammered over the first baseman's head. Oh, one to count on the foul ball. Grant Mahoney on deck, leads the team with 12 RBIs and already has one RBI. Would love to get a guy in scoring position with Mahoney on deck. No balls, one strike. Baxter back into the box on the left-hand side. He's going to square. Third baseman charges. Pulls back on the strike two. No balls, two strikes. Wasatch has made a lot of growth over the course of this season, but I'll tell you, Tyler, they're bunting has just not been good all year long. They have not been effective at getting the bunt down when they need to. Again, 0 for 2 in those opportunities. Well, Baxter comes through, though, on the two out, two strikes. He hammers this one to right field. His second hit of the ball game, and Wasatch now with runners on first and second. Still nobody out. <laughs> I, I, I just can't help but chuckle because, you know, that's player. You say, well, if you're not going to get a bunt down, you better, you better get the job done otherwise. And, Cruz has no problem, Tyler. I mean, that was a great swing there on an 0-2 pitch. Just drove that ball to right field. He doesn't need to bunt it, Ty. He'll just move him over and get you in business here and maybe ask Grant to get the bunt down and see what happens. First and second. Nobody out from Mahoney. He's going to square. Pulls back. That one's low for ball one. Spanish Fork players all over the place. This is a tough call for me here, Tyler, if I'm Coach Jacobson, because I understand this is probably the spot you want to bunt. Get a runner on second and third with less than two outs. However, Grant's been your best hitter this season. He's been your best hitter recently with runners in scoring position. And I think I'd probably let him swing it. The 1-0 is in there at the belt for strike one. So 1-1 one, one the count, nobody out. Tie ball game here in the top of the six, 2-2. Two two. But Wasatch with back-to-back -back singles to get the game going has runners on first and second. The 1-1. One, one. Mahoney squares again. He's going to lay down the bunt. It's a good one to he'll remove both runners to second and third. Nobody's on first base, and Mahoney lays down the third single of the day. Spanish Fork gets confused on their bunt coverage. Nobody covers first base, and Wasatch now has the bases loaded with nobody out. <coughs> now I've had, excuse me, Tom.